Well guys, it is time to have fun. It is time to listen some bold predictions about bad, bad and beyond. One dollar price target from Loop Capital. This is what he actually said about the company and why he expects the company actually to fail. What do you think accounts for this latest bout of retail enthusiasm? I think this is another um, meme stock uh, driven uh, short squeeze. Uh, the short interest in Bed Bath & Beyond was quite high. Um, and so, you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, it's a usual cast of characters, the Wall Street bets crowd, um, you know, pushing the stock up. There's some, there certainly are no fundamental reasons um, for the move that we've seen. If anything, the fundamental picture has actually gotten worse over the last several weeks. And maybe that's what sparked the increase in short interest. So you think the stock is a short, basically, but can the retail army spoil the uh, result of that trade for you? Well, you know, I think it goes back to that old saying, you know, the market can remain irrational longer than you and I can remain solvent. I mean, you know, I could certainly see this continuing uh, in the short term, but in the near, but in the long term, you know, the stock price is going to have to reflect the fundamentals of the business and the fundamentals of this business are terrible and only getting worse. You, so so let's let's just call this bed, bath, and bye bye right? I mean, that's kind of what we're talking about here, BBBY. Um, their debt picture is extremely... Um, serious, isn't it? I mean, they've got a lot coming due, maybe not so much next year, but the year after. Is it 2024? Uh, that's correct. So they have um, about $300 million, a little less than $300 million of debt that comes due in 2024. And then they've got other debt maturities in 2034 and 2044. But I'm, I'm less worried about the debt maturities. I'm more worried about their liquidity position. It's hmm. it's really deteriorating at a very fast rate. They're, they're down to about $100 million uh, in cash. Uh, they already have drawn $200 million on their credit facility. Um, you know, that's what I'm more concerned about, particularly if the suppliers lose faith um, and start uh, you know, basically well, giving them more onerous terms. Well, that's the, that's the, that's a key question because if if the vendors see that they don't have cash, are the vendors going to require more money up front to give them the laundry baskets and knives and plates and and linens that they do? I, I mean, that really is a sixty-four thousand dollar question. To give you a little bit of history here, I mean, that's what did in Circuit City. Um, Circuit City, um, you know, at the time that they. Uh, went bankrupt. I mean, they were struggling, but not nearly as bad as Bed Bath and Beyond is. They also had a lot less debt, but the vendors just lost faith, and they ended up in a death spiral. And that's the scenario mm -hmm. that I believe we could see with Bed Bath and Beyond. What if anything could avoid that scenario? So, look, the only hail mary pass that I see at this point is if they raise equity, if they are able to basically sell a bunch of new stock and pay down debt and essentially, you know, forestall their demise. We saw GameStop do it. We saw AMC do it. The problem with that is that it would be incredibly diluted to their existing um, shareholders. And and by the way, you know, they're going to need to raise a lot of, of, of cash. I mean, we're talking probably at least $500 million, at least enough to repay the $200 million that they have outstanding on their asset-based credit facility and the $284 million that's coming due in 2024. Shouldn't they do that right now then at this moment with the stock where it is? Well, uh, two things. First off, it's a lot easier said than done. The other thing is that, you know, when GameStop in particular did did it, I mean, the stock price was was significantly higher, significantly higher. So, I mean, let, you know, just let's give you some numbers here. Let's just say the stock was at $20 and they issued $500 million of stock. That would be 25 million new shares issued. They only have 80 million shares outstanding right now. So that would be a ton of dilution to their existing shareholders. Funny but true, guys, you know, I might be speculating too much, but the only reason the company to go down to one dollar is the scenario in which he said that the company could actually recover by paying off debt by issuing a lot of shares. We all know this potentially could chase off a lot of investors. Everyone might say, you know, they would elude the, the price of the stock. I would just be selling off. And this could be probably the only scenario in which uh, we could see a bad bad and beyond at one dollar i'm freaking believable he also said look the other short squeeze place did it as well gamestop did it amc did it right he tried to to bundle together the same exact strategy that they have been using uh, it's kind of a uh, you know no-brainer for this company to do so but the idea over here is that in any other circumstances 
Now, people don't see the stock going to a dollar. First point over here. Second point is that what he's trying to point out as a dilution method didn't work in a dilution way for GameStop or AMC. Simply because there is a thesis behind there are already a lot of shares over the float. So putting much more shares on the general float locking up it's not going to be a big issue if you assume that there are millions, some people assume that there are actually billions of shares in AMC's in circulation, uh, pushing and creating this unrealistic daily price action. But uh, that's not the case with, with Bad Bath and Beyond. Just to put some perspective, for the last month, the stock is up 400%. And I'm not here to promoting or to speak about anything. The idea over here is that the short interest spiked. This means that there are more and new short positions opened against the company. This means that probably shorts sold some opportunities over here. And if this saga continues, who knows, this might actually end up being the similar situation that we're seeing with AMC and GameStop. People holding their shares and waiting for, for, for the first one to fail, creating the chain reaction of the shorts and bada bim bada boom. So for him, and probably from the general agenda shorting the company offering uh, uh, additional share issuing is probably the only way they can actually crush the stock price uh, who knows for a short term to the levels that they're talking about remember the guy who gave amc a penny price target where is this guy i don't think these guys actually believe of of, of what they're actually saying i don't think these guys believe in in these numbers that they're trying to project. The only thing that I believe is that they're trying to direct the price in particular uh, range. They're pushing down as low as possible in the single single digit range. This is what they try to do with AMC, a guy with the penny dollar strike price, right? Uh, this is, they try to push the stock into a particular trading range, which will be much easier for the shorts to crush if the stock fails uh, under $10, for example, for AMC. It will be easier for them to crush. Don't forget that uh, the cheaper the stock, the AMC goes, the higher the margin requirements will be. So they already put themselves in a position in which uh, they simply couldn't afford to drop it to low. They couldn't afford the stock to go too high. So the situation with AMC is completely different. Anyway, guys, I'm just curious to, to hear your thoughts. Do you think that this is another uh, strategy of the shorts pushing for additional shares issuing? in the case uh, particularly about bad bat and beyond subscribe to the channel guys like this video and come back for more